guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, or today is the start of a new week, so the start of a new vlog for me, for my stitching updates and whatever else I want to talk about. So, today is Monday, I got my calendar right here, Monday, May 23rd, May 23rd, <laughs> no, it is April 23rd, good God. Okay, <laughs> April 23rd, my husband is fishing again today. This is the third day. Yes, third day in a row, Saturday, Sunday, today. I don't have like a technical job today. I had an admin stuff to do and then I have a proofreading job to do for someone. So I'm going to be getting done other things. I have to go to the grocery store to pick up a couple things for dinner that I forgot to get yesterday. I'm going to clean the house today. <sighs> so, yesterday I actually stitched on two projects because I recorded a Stitch With Me video yesterday that you guys have already seen by this point because it was last week. And... Um, so I worked on the Plum Street Samplers Beans Beans chart. Yeah, I really love this chart. I've loved this chart for a long time and I don't know why I haven't stitched it. So, stitching it on 14 count Ada by Picture This Plus in uh, Midas. So what I got done for the Stitch With Me video was these two words and yeah that's my one of my clay by kim dragons yeah really love this i can't wait to finish the word there's the word drink here because the way the pattern is laid out it's in two parts so i'm doing one page and then the other page when i do the word drink then i can stitch some people and that's what i really love especially the woman that's holding her coffee cup upside down because please okay so i worked on that and then I started the last of those little coffee patterns while watching three more episodes of The Walking Dead last night. I am on episode 27. I'm to the part where Rick and them have just gotten to Woodbury to rescue Glenn and what's that girl's name? The farmer's daughter girl that he's with. And, uh, Daryl and Merle, they're put in the middle in that ring. And yeah, that guy, that governor guy, he's a fruit loop. Yeah. But I got the middle F done in the word coffee. And believe it or not, this took me two hours to stitch that F. I tell you, I feel like I stitch like a turtle. Like, so my goal with this is to get done one letter a night. By that rate, I will have this done by Friday if I can do that. So yeah, that is my plan. So, but yeah, um, hand dye fabrics by Stephanie, 14 count Ada and June bug and just DMC that I picked out for, it's going to go from light to dark. If you, um, watched my last vlog, you'll see that I picked the colors for that. So that was what I stitched on. Um, a couple questions or concerns, not concerns, a couple questions that I had on previous videos. My ironing video that went up, people have asked me, what is the setting I set my iron at? I put it on the highest setting, which is the linen setting. I've never scorched or burned my fabric, and that seems to be the setting that works the, the best for me. And then in the uh, review video I did for Shazzy Z's um, cross stitch, journal pages. I kept saying euros. Wrong. No. It is Great British Pounds. I always get that wrong. I, I don't know why. I, I don't know why I get that wrong every single time. So yeah, it is not euros. It is Great British Pounds. Just saying. I did find a new book to read. Very excited about that because I read like three good books and then I went through like 10 samples. And I was starting to get discouraged because I love to read. So 
going through a sample and hating it. I mean, going through four, five, six samples, and I'm like, okay. Well, I am an Amazon Prime member, which I'm sure you guys know that. I received an email from them, was it yesterday? No, day before, that said, hey, we have a deal for you, Kindle Unlimited for $1.99 for three months. Well, that's a tremendous deal because normally it is like $9.99 a month or $7.99 a month, something like that. So I'm like, yeah, okay. And with Kindle Unlimited, you can read as many books as you want for free that they put in that category. It's not, there's aren't a lot of like big blockbuster ones in there. Of course not. They're, Amazon's a company. They're trying to make money. But I was perusing in there and I found this book called The Ruined Wife by Maren Montgomery. And it is really good. I'm so glad. I mean, I filmed my Stitch With Me video yesterday. My husband was taking a nap before we went to my sister's soccer game. And I said, okay, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to read a sample. I'm going to start reading this book. <clears throat> and it was, it caught me the very first page. And you know how I am about books. Like it's got to grab me from the get go or I'm not reading it. So the premise of the book, here's what it says. Alistair, that's a woman. Alistair has found the perfect partner and husband, Stephen. Together, they've built a successful life, had a beautiful child, and still behave like newlyweds long since the day he carried her over the threshold. But all of that changes in an instant thanks to a thoughtless deed that has lifelong repercussions. With secrets bubbling to the surface, the pair find their American dream life suddenly in jeopardy, and neither one of them are willing to let go at any cost. The book opens with Alistair in prison, in prison for murdering a woman, and her husband's in a coma. Okay. Um, she's, it said, you know, I'm 43 years old or I'm 42 years old, was never in trouble with the law, you know, might have had a speeding ticket. I mean, it was uncanny because I read it and I was like, oh my God, that sounds like me. Totally. So then it clicks to like a couple months before with her being in prison. She comes home early from a business trip and catches her husband cheating. But see the way the book, it's hard. It's so hard to explain. So it, you see her coming home a day early from the business trip. Her husband doesn't know she's coming home. And, um, she had installed a camera at their front door or something the day before. So she walks out back and she sees these two people in the hot tub and you assume it's her husband and, and a woman but you don't really know. And then the next chapter is like five months before that, where her husband actually admits he had an affair. And so she's like flipping out and it's really good though. I'm not, I'm not giving it justice. It's really good because you know, I like those books about that can happen. That can happen in real life. And people unravel and go cuckoo crazy when stuff like that happens. So I will keep you updated, but yeah, really, really enjoying that book. Okay. Dinner. I don't know about you guys, but the question of what are we having for dinner is the most hated question in this house. We have the same stuff for dinner every week, it seems. So I was watching Pam and Steph last week and they were talking about that slow cooker sauce for the pot roast. Went to the grocery store yesterday for our usual, you know, weekly trip. And I was in that aisle. We are having this for dinner tonight. I didn't want the beef one. I wanted something with chicken. So this is buffalo chicken. Uh, you do two and a half pounds of chicken breast, which I actually, when I'm done this video, I'm going to put it in a slow cooker because I like to cook mine on low for like seven hours. You can do it on high three to four hours or six to seven hours low. So you just put the chicken in there, throw this sauce on it, leave it be until you're getting ready to eat it. And then you just shred the chicken with like a fork or whatever. But I have to go back to the store because I didn't get like rolls for it. And the grocery store near us makes these potato wedges and the way they're seasoned, they're seasoned with the batter from their fried chicken. <gasps> 
are so good. So we're going to have those with it. I hope it's good. I'm sure it's going to be good. It's something different and it's something that, you know, me being technically somewhat off today from work, I can take care of dinner because my husband usually cooks dinner every night. So we'll let you know how that was when I check in tomorrow. Okay. Let's talk nails for a second. Yeah, I know this is not all about stitching. You guys know I like to do my nails. I like to have something on my nails because I feel like if I don't, my nails break because of all the housework I do and the typing and stuff. I love the Impress nails, but I've stopped using them. And I think I use them so much. I mean, I had them on every week for like six months that what's happened is it's kind of pulled my nail up on, in places from the nail bed. I don't want my nails coming up from the nail bed because they'll be coming off then and that's not good. Um, so I've stopped using those. And I went back to Jamberry for a time. I got so irritated yesterday. I applied Jamberry. I have the hardest damn time applying them and not having bubbles because my nails are curved. If you look at my nail, it's not like flat, you know, it goes around. So of course I've researched videos on YouTube about what to do, how to apply it for curved nails. It's a giant pain in the ass. Like I don't want to spend two hours doing my manicure. I might as well pay someone to do it if I'm going to do that. So I was watching, wait a minute, let me backtrack. I had even filmed a Jamberry tutorial. And it was supposed to go up on my channel like next month. I deleted it. If I can't get it right, I'm not going to do a video for you guys. And, and no, I'm not. So I deleted that video. But I was watching or listening to Trisha, 3 Out Threads, her last Stitch With Me video where she talks about Color Street. Color Street is also nail strips like Jamberry, but it's actual nail polish. And instead of having to go through, you know, it's have an adhesive and all of that and have to, the Jamberry, you have to be careful when you pull them off your nails or remove them. The Color Street removes with nail polish remover. So she mentioned Jennifer Upton's Color Street page, which Jennifer Upton does floss tube and I've watched some of her videos before. So I went to her page last night and there was... I don't want to know if it's, a, I don't think it's a sale, but an offer where if you buy two, you get one free. Now they're not cheap. Um, oh no, it was buy three, get one free. I think I wound up spending $43 because yeah, I think it was buy three, get one free. They were each $13. Some are $12 or $11. So I looked at the website. I watched how I didn't watch a video yet, how you do it, but I looked at the the process. They give you like step-by-step -step pictures. I am very intrigued. I am hoping that I can apply them without bubbles because that is the biggest, it's so irritating. Like I applied the Jamberry yesterday and I immediately took them off. So frustrating. So I'm actually going to do a video when I get them. I don't know how long it's going to take for me to get them, but I'm actually going to do a video showing you the ones I bought going through step-by-step step how to apply them. I'm going to apply them live on camera for the first time and give you my, you'll get my honest review of them. I hope I love them because me painting my nails, my nails chip in like two seconds. Now it did say on the Color Street website, if you are like, they're chip resistant, but not chip proof. Like it will chip if you really, really do a lot of stuff with your hands. So like I said, it will be interesting. Even if the manicure only lasted a week for me instead of two weeks, which it says it should last, I would be happy with that. Because literally, I'm not joking, when I paint my nails, in like five minutes, if I do something, I have a chip. And it just, no. So yeah, I will let you guys know when I get those and when that video is going to go up. But the last thing I want to talk about, and Jesus, this clip is going to be 15 minutes or more. It's just stitching in general. You guys know, like I talked about in my last clip yesterday when I filmed for my last vlog, I want to get done the chalk for the home, the toilet piece, the bigger one. I'm going to be honest. I don't feel like stitching on it, but I want it done because I have the first part done and I have the frame done. 
So I really do think I'm going to go back to doing one strand a night because eventually it'll get done. It'll probably take me till the end of the year to get it done that way. But I just, it's just too daunting. Like those really big projects, I just, I can't do them anymore. Like, I don't know. I feel like, a, so because there's so many small ones I want to stitch and I pulled some to show you. The flowers kit that I talked about from Ben Creek. Want to stitch that. Definitely want to stitch this Lizzie Kate breast cancer one because I cut a piece of my chemo shirt that I wore every week. And I want to do a canvas finish with the chemo shirt and this. Want to stitch this one from a Just Cross Stitch magazine. Want to stitch one of these little fox faces. I want to stitch the one with the crown and use the DMC golden skein for the crown. Want to stitch that small bee pattern from this Prairie Schooler one. A couple people have stitched that. Love that. And then, of course, I want to do the teapot things or coffee cup things. Yeah, I mean, if I stitch on big projects, I'm not going to be able to do those. And any, you know, it's going to take me forever to do a big project. So I think for the big ones, I'm going to have to do a strand a day and, and I'm just going to have to try it. So I'm going to actually try it tonight. I am going to do a strand on the chalk for the home, which probably is only going to be one window, if I'm being honest. And then I'm going to do another letter on the coffee piece. I don't know. Do you guys struggle with that? Like, I don't want to be, I want to love what I'm stitching. That's the whole point. It's not supposed to be like a chore or a job, but yeah. So, okay. I'm going to sign off here. This is 17 minutes. Good God. If I get anything in the mail, I will check in with you in the afternoon. Otherwise I will see you tomorrow. Okay. It is 1245 here on Monday, April 23rd. My mail has not come yet, but I just had sort of an epiphany. I feel like with all this time off that I've had, like last week, my mind has had time to like go cuckoo crazy about stitching. I filmed the clip you guys just saw and I was sitting in my recline, in my chair right there, drinking some coffee, looking at Facebook and a video popped up that said, I'm trying to think exactly what it said. Basically it was saying that Everything happens for everyone at a different time and you have to wait for your time. Meaning, and I'm guilty of this all the time. You know, I compare myself to people all the time. I think it's human nature, but I really think I need to stop. Um, just because I don't stitch as fast as blah, 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 or finish as great as blah, 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 does not mean that what I do is not good. Do you, you know what I mean? So I want to stop comparing myself and stop like criticizing myself saying I'm such a slow stitcher. Um, it is what it is. I complete my stitching. However, I complete it. And I also was sitting there and I'm like, what's the big rush to get all these projects done? Because part of it is the process of stitching. I mean, yeah, you like to get stuff done, but I, I don't know. I feel like I've lately, I've been like rush, 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 rush. And I actually feel like that in my life. Like on an everyday basis, I am rushing to get through house chores, rushing to get done work. I don't know. <coughs> I feel like I'm at the precipice of something, you know, right at the edge of just, I don't know. I sat here today. I went to the grocery store, got the stuff for dinner, came back and I said, you know what? I'm not going to rush through cleaning my whole house today because I only have a half a day of work. For the past two weeks, I have done my little thing where I will do one house chore a day, like the major cleaning. And so, you know what? That's what I did. I dusted today. That was my chore for today. That's what is going to be done today as far as cleaning. Tomorrow, I'll vacuum. Yeah, I'm just going to keep at that. And I'm okay with it. You know, I, I'm also a person that likes to have control. And when you think about life, a lot of times we don't have a control of anything. We may think we do, but we really don't. So <laughs> I'm going to try this with my stitching.
I've tried this before. I really haven't given it a good college try though. A rotation. Because I have a couple projects in the works, I have the hands-on design tulip house. This one. I have the beans beans chart. I've also started that Harry Potter one, the Kentima by Kana design that says something about happiness if you just turn on the light. I've started that one. So I have, plus the coffee one that I showed you in the clip before this. So there's four projects. I'm going to try, and I'm not going to like freak out if it doesn't work. I'm going to try working on one project for a whole week and then changing for the next week in the course of a month. Because given that it doesn't matter that we're at the end of the month, I don't care. Now, obviously, when I get my Jabco kit for the month and my chalk piece, my, uh, you know, I'm doing the little monthly chalk, chalk ones. Um, like next week, I'll probably start maze. That will probably be my weekly project because I do still want to get those done in the month that they are. But yeah, I'm going to try that. So this week, I'm going to work on the tulip house. I'm going to work on this. I've already got it downstairs ready to go. And what I noticed when I was looking at this, if you look at the brick, like at the house, the red, I am, uh, I changed the color to Weeks Dye Works Turkish red. It called for Aztec red. This is a different color. This line of bricks up here. They use gassed old brick. I didn't pick a color for that because I totally forgot that they did that. I'm guessing it's a different color because this is supposed to be kind of probably an eave of a roof. So it's supposed to be doing a different shade. I'm not going to pick a different color. I am just going to actually stitch it with this Turkish red. I mean, it that's, that's a minor thing. But I do think once I get more than just that middle window done, because that's all I have done is that tiny window. Once I get into it and get more of it stitched, I really think I'll be excited to stitch on it and work on it again. But yeah, so that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, oh, and I also forgot to mention to you guys, remember I talked about how we were recycling my old cell phone, my husband's old cell phone to that company. It is called Trademore, Trademore Mobile. I got an email uh, a couple days ago and they gave us $44 for the phone. I was shocked. So I had to eat my words because I was for sure that they weren't going to give us that. So... Yeah, we got $44 in the form of a MasterCard gift card that you have to use online because they sent it to me by email. So my husband's like, just when, I, when you buy something, just use it. So, yeah. Um, in Westworld, did anyone watch the premiere of season two of Westworld last night on HBO? I have not watched it yet. I may watch it today. I only have like 50 more pages to proofread and then... I am going to sit down and do some stitching. I think I'm going to work on my beans beans chart. So I may either watch Westworld because I have the HBO app on my iPad or I will watch some more Walking Dead. So, okay, if I get anything in the mail, I will check in with you guys. Our mail usually comes pretty late on Mondays, given that there's no mail Sunday. So basically you're getting two days worth of mail on Monday. So mail's not going to be here for a few hours. But if I don't get anything in the mail, I will see you guys tomorrow to show you what I stitched on tonight. Hey guys, it is Monday, August 23rd. It is about 7.30. My husband just went to bed. Um, he was out fishing really early this morning and I am downstairs getting ready to watch some Walking Dead or Westworld season, the first episode of season two. Why am I recording down here this late hour? Because I'm about to lose my friggin' shit. That's why. Um, I know I said this in my last vlog. It bears repeating, obviously. Please read the description box on my videos. Especially if I've done a product review or an unboxing. I will always link the product where you can go and get it yourself. I just had someone comment 
on my 3L Threads video asking where they can get the threads and sign up. And I swear to God, your guys are driving me to drink. I, I do not mind answering any question that I don't have in that description box or that I don't have that I haven't answered in my video. You guys know that. I get plenty of comments and messages all the time. I have no problem answering something I haven't already answered. I'm happy to help you. But something I have linked in that description box, I'm telling you, if one more person messages me and says, where can they get something? I am, I'm going to lose it. It's going to be like floss tubers gone wild. Like, seriously. Please, guys, please. So, okay, yeah. But yeah, if you look, I'm getting ready to... There's my chalk for the home piece. Getting ready to pull that. I'm going to watch uh, The Walking Dead. Or I may do the um, the Westworld episode so I can see that. But yeah, okay, I'm going to sign off here. I just wanted to say that really quick because I was like, oh my frigging God, when I saw that comment. Of course I answered it. I just said, everything's linked in the description box. Mm, you do not even know. Okay. I will check in with you guys tomorrow and show you how much I get done on the tulip house. I don't think there's enough coffee for me today. There's not enough coffee in my house today. It is Tuesday, April 24th. It is 9.23 in the morning. I have just gotten back from my dentist appointment. I mentioned in my Stitch With Me video that a couple days ago, I bit into a like chewy caramel and it loosened a crown I have down here. I have spent a lot of money on my teeth <clears throat> in my adult life. Um, I ground, I grind my teeth. I ground my teeth for a long time and didn't realize how much damage I was actually doing to my teeth. <clears throat> I've worn a night guard now for about 15 years. But I have cracked teeth. Um, my two back teeth are gold. Yeah, see that? Yeah, two back teeth are gold. Front two teeth are veneers. I mean, and I have a bunch of crowns. I've had some serious work. So no more sticky candy. No more Sour Patch Kids, gummy bears, chewy caramels that, you know, I bit down and the force of me pulling my teeth apart loosened it. Holy crap. My appointment was for 8 o'clock this morning because my job starts in about 5 or 10 minutes. And the assistant was like, I'm going to try to just pry it off. I almost screamed because, you know, the tooth didn't have a root canal. So there was still a piece of a tooth under there. So she had taken this instrument. She was like wiggling it and then took this instrument and popped it off. And when she popped it off, it touched like the nerve. Oh my God. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, so luckily all that's taken care of now cemented back in good to go um i did stitch last night watch the walking dead holy crap i had nightmares last night <laughs> and i also didn't sleep that great because when i know i have an appointment like that dental appointment the next morning i don't sleep well because i had to get up earlier than i normally do to get there and yes yeah, so i'm way tired today but i actually did work on my plum street samplers Beans, beans. Yeah, I got the rest of... Wait a minute, there's my needle. I got the rest of the words done. So this is like the start of some steam on one of the coffee cups. Um, so yeah, if I get to work on this, I don't know when. The next time I get to work on it, um, I'll start doing some people. So that'll be cool. And then I did work on the tulip house. And I'm so glad that I did. Um... You know, I know I said I was going to do the rotation, but if I get to the end of the week and I still want to work on this, I'm just going to keep working on it because now I actually have some more done. So last night I got done all the windows on the house and I started on the door. And one thing that I do when I sit down to stitch at night, I set a goal for myself and I really try to set a reasonable goal because I know I'm only going to be stitching for probably two hours or so. So I sat down last night and I set a goal to stitch all the windows. 
and I did, but I still had some thread left. So I'm like, oh, let me start the door. So tonight, now I may be working late. That's a possibility. So, but even if I work late, like if I, I figure I may be working until 10 o'clock tonight. If that's the case, I will still stitch. I will still stitch for probably an hour unless I'm just beat down, dead tired. But my goal for tonight is to get the door done. And if I get the door done in a reasonable amount of time, well, then maybe I'll start stitching some brick because this is all like brick around here. But yeah, I'm really glad I decided to, you know, go ahead and keep working on this because I really do want to get it done. And like I said, the hardest part for me is starting a project. Once I get some done, the motivation to keep going is there. But when I was working on the beans, beans chart, this is hilarious. Um, I got down to my last strand of black on my bobbin and realized I have no more black. How is that possible? How do I not have like a stockpile of 310, right? So I was like, crap, when is the next time I'm going to be able to get to Michael's? I have no idea. So I said, let me go on Amazon and look and see, do they carry DMC? They do. Now, I paid a little bit more for it than I normally would at Michael's. At Michael's, it's like 52 cents a skein. I paid 66 cents a skein. But I got a box, like it was a box of 12 skeins of black for $7.96, $7.96. And it's going to be here tomorrow. The price of me not having to leave my house to go to Michael's to do all of that worth the 66 cents. So yeah, so I ordered that. So now I have 12 skeins because the rest of that's black. I'm probably going to go through another two skeins of black easily. So did that. And then yesterday, you know, people are crazy. We know this, right? I went to the grocery store as I told you guys. Oh, the dinner. That reminds me. That buffalo chicken stuff, it was awesome. And I was so glad because most of the time when I try something new, we hate it. We really liked it. It was really good and it was so easy to do. So highly recommend that if you like buffalo chicken. And it wasn't spicy, and it wasn't bland. It was good. It was so good. My husband is taking the leftovers to work today and tomorrow for his lunch. So, but okay. So I go to the store yesterday and I have on a post-it note, the four or five things that I need at the store. I'm the kind of person, I don't like carrying trash. Like I don't throw receipts in my purse. I like to throw that stuff away. Like usually right when I get out of the grocery store, I'm looking for a trash can. Well, I had the post-it. I had all my stuff in my basket. I had the post-it. <laughs> you could have just, I wish I would have taken a picture of this. <laughs> I'm laughing just thinking about it. So I'm walking up to the register and the way the registers go, the registers are here. Customer service desk is next to the registers. In front of the customer service desk, I see a trash can. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to throw away the post-it before I get in line. Well, when I walk up to the trash can, It's one of the trash can lids where you like push it down and the lid will spin. There is a big sign covering the whole trash can lid that says, please do not go through the trash. And they even have a picture drawn of like a hand dipping in trash. And it says, please don't do this. I thought to myself, like what, what has precipitated this sign? It's not just one person going through the trash. This must have happened multiple times. And so I'm like, why, why would people be going through the trash at the customer service desk? Thoughts? I mean, I was thinking, okay, maybe people, cause you can buy scratch offs there. Maybe people are scratching off scratch offs. They're not winners and they're throwing them in the trash and people are coming along and digging in the trash to think that maybe they're winners. I don't know. My mind was boggled. Mind boggled. Why would you be going through the trash? <laughs> I should have taken a picture of the sign with my phone so I could show you guys. I was just like, what the fuck? Yeah. But yeah. So yep. Normal work day today. And the guy's an expert. So he's probably going to go blah, 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 on and on and on. 
and it's technical. It's about like disc drives or some crap. It's a patent infringement. That's most of the stuff that we have. It's like watching paint dry. But I'm hoping it goes smooth, that there are no technological difficulties, and I hope I'm not working until 10 o'clock tonight, but if I am, I am. I'm prepared, you know. So, I'm going to sign off here. I hope you guys are having a good day. If I get something in the mail, oh, that's another thing. I'm not signing off yet. Amazon. You know I order a boatload of shit from Amazon. I order my cake cups for my carry from Amazon because they are cheaper than my grocery store. I ordered some that were supposed to be here yesterday. It was supposed to be delivered by regular mail. My mail came at like, I don't know, two or three o'clock, no K cups. And I'm like, Hmm, okay. Well, I, in the hubbub of getting the mail and dinner and all that, I totally forgot about it. This morning before I left for the dentist, I checked my phone and it said it was delivered and put in the mailbox. And I'm like, Oh, maybe it was the separate. Cause sometimes Amazon will have the USPS your packages will come, at least to my house, they will come in a different truck than the, um, the normal mail. So when I came back from the dentist, I'm like, oh, I'm going to grab the K-cups. So I look in my mailbox. There's no K-cups in there. And there's no box around on our porch. And I'm like, what the fuck right now? Like, really? Okay. So now I have to come in and try to say, okay, I didn't get this package. Finding that page on Amazon was not easy. And they actually have a little video that says, is your package missing? It says, and I'm quoting, I kid you not. It says a package can be shown as delivered up to 36 hours before you get it. That makes no sense to me. So now I have to wait another day. Yeah. I'm going to wait till the end of today. And when I'm, if my mail comes today and that package is not in there, <clears throat> I have to contact them because I paid $17 for those K cups that I don't have. And I really hope that one of my neighbors does not have it and is not giving it to me. Let me find out that happened. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Like you, why would it say delivered 36 hours before you get it? But yeah, so I'll, I'll let you guys know how that turned out. So, like I said, if I get mail today, I will check in with you in the middle of the day. If not, I will see you tomorrow. This is probably my oldest mug I have in my collection from the Key West airport in Florida. My husband and I went there right after we first started dating, visited some friends of his. Yes. Hello. Today is, I am moving stuff to look at my calendar. I think it's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. Damn it. I just saw I was supposed to clean the bathroom today. Hmm. Okay. Today is Wednesday, April 25th. It is 938 in the morning. My job starts in about 20 minutes. So what perfect time to come on here and check in with you guys. So last night, oh, I did get something in the mail yesterday, but I decided to just wait until today because of work and all of that. But Total Breakfast of Champions here, Pop-Tarts. Uh, the only kind of Pop-Tart I like is brown sugar cinnamon with no frosting. So good. So I will be eating them in a minute when I get off here with you. But yeah, I did get one thing in the mail yesterday. A postcard from Ivy who goes by Cross Stitch Queen and I, she literally leaves a comment on every single one of my videos. I love her. She left me a wonderful, wonderful note on the postcard, but look at the postcard. Ah! I just want to squeeze him, give him kisses. Yeah. Is he not the cutest fox? Oh my God. Ivy, I thanked you by email, but thank you so much for that postcard. I have it sitting here because I can't stop staring at it. Yeah. So what did I stitch on last night? Last night didn't quite go as I planned. I, you know, got downstairs at a normal time, close to nine o'clock. But then my grandfather called and I was on the phone with him for an hour and he's doing really well. You know, my grandfather had Guillain-Barre. 
he's doing fantastic. He just turned 91. I mean, he's amazing. I only hope to be like him and make it to that kind of age and still be able to get around and do what he does. So talk to him for a while on the phone. And then a job came in for today, so I had to do prep work. And yes, I usually do not do that stuff at 10 o'clock at night. So I didn't get downstairs to stitch until like 1030. And so I told you my goal yesterday was to get the door done. And it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Like when I, I should start saying big lofty goals, apparently, because what did I get done? I got done the door. Yeah. Now, I don't remember, it's coming along though, right? I don't remember what color was originally called for for the door. I want to say it was a week's dye works. I used Threadworks Rainstorm, and there's more of that. Like the roof is this gray color, and there's some like down here. So now, tonight, I'm going to try to do like, there's like a line down here, and then I'm going to start filling in the brick with the bright red. But yeah, I was just like, I'm staying up until that door is done. And it took me, believe it or not, I was up until one o'clock, but I also read some. Oh my God, that book I'm reading, The Ruined Wife. Oh, it's so good. Um, the first half of the book told the perspective of the wife. The second half is the husband's perspective of the same events. Love books like that because... You know it's going to be totally different. So, yeah. Definitely enjoying that for not paying for it. For, you know, I signed, well, I paid $1.99 for three months of Kindle Unlimited. And that was included in there. But okay. So, going to keep working on the Tulip House tonight. Um, I have a little, just a little couple of other things to share with you. But if you watched Priscilla and Chelsea's last video, they talked about the picture that when they went to the Inspired Needle, I think. They wear their Uggs, like their slip-ons, and they talk about that they make slippers. I have the slippers. I will show you because I'm wearing them. Here are the slippers. These were 60 bucks on Amazon. Of course, I like magenta purple. These are really comfortable. Now, I normally, and there's something, yeah, see, I wear these outside. I normally do not wear these around the house because they're heavy. They're heavy and the, um... I mean, you can see the sole is thick. The whole reason I bought them was so when I go to check the mail or if I go to sit out back with my husband and I don't feel like putting on like regular shoes, I can just slip these on. So yeah. And I have them on right now because I just brought my dog in. When I go outside to let her in and out, excuse me, I um, will slip them on. I keep them by the front door. Convenient. Okay. I think they also had talked about, I don't know if it was their last video or the video before, somebody, I don't know if it was Chelsea, somebody was talking about the Country Cottage Needleworks cake and pie charts. You know, it was a series of six a long while ago. And I had the crazy idea that, oh yeah, I'm going to stitch all six. No, I stitched two. But I wanted to show them to you, and I know I showed them to you in my finished video like a long, long time ago. Here's the blueberry one. I stitched this on, this is 40 count fabric. Uh-huh, 40 count. One strand over two. Now, I used all the required colors because it came with it. I forget what fabric this is, though. I don't remember. But see these buttons? Okay, those buttons aren't supposed to be there. This is linen. This is 40 count linen. I, there was a slub underneath each of those buttons. I went to remove the slub and I tore a hole in the fabric in both of those spots. And I went, oh no, it was one of them. One of these had a slub. That's right. One of them had a slub and I said, oh my good God, what the hell am I going to do? Because I had like 85% of this stitched. So I found a button, put it there, and I said, well, I can't have just one. So that's why I decided to put the button on the other side. But yeah, I had these finished by Deb of Artistic Needle. I don't think she does finishing anymore, but she was very reasonable. And these are finished like fantastic. And this is, I just hang this on my wall. So yeah, I really like that finishing. So there was blueberry and then I had done strawberry. 
Yeah, I really love stitching these, but I got burnt out. And there's the back with the C with the ribbon. Yeah, I got burnt out stitching them, so I didn't do the other four. Shocker. Yeah. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about in this clip is something that was brought to my attention yesterday, and I'm telling you, you know, Amy of Amityville, she, now someone had tagged me in a post on Instagram and I glanced at it, but didn't like really look at it. She said, sent me a message and was like, Hey, has it been brought to your attention that someone, an internet troll has used your name to bully someone. And I said, what the fuck? Like, are you kidding me right now? Meaning this person made a fake Facebook account. I'm glancing at the message, made a fake, fake, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> a fake Facebook account to send it's ginger and stitches to send her a PM to say that she was retarded and needed to disappear and said she was stupid. If she thought she was ever going to be in the league of me, McKenna, Pam and Steph, Gerald, Priscilla and Chelsea, and a whole bunch of other people. First of all, who's trying to be me? Who's trying to be McKenna or Gerald or you be you? That's why I love floss tube. Not to see other people that are exactly like myself, but to see different people. And that's the great thing about floss tube is that there are so many people that bring different things to this community. N no, nobody's trying to be me or whoever. Um... And so, according to Amy's message, right after they sent the message, they deleted their Facebook account. You know, this subject is so tired. Like, we've encountered this so many times. How many times have I gotten negative comments or negative personal messages? You guys remember the thumbs up when I gave the thumbs up to that person and they like friggin' flipped out and like called me a bitch and all kinds of stuff. Like... Are you serious right now? Here's the bottom line. You be you. Seriously. But when someone leaves a negative comment, sends you a personal message, I know it's hard to not be hurt and all of that. There is something wrong with them. There is nothing wrong with you. Mean comments and things like that are more of a reflection of the person that is saying them than the person they are being said about. So, please stop, people. Who And you know, whoever, what, what really like blew my mind was whoever did this obviously watches Floss too because they know all of us. That's frightening. That's frightening that someone is watching my channel that would send a message to someone like that. No. No, 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 no. There's something on my glasses. So please stop. I mean, it's just, it's awful. It is awful to bully anyone, much less someone who is putting themselves out there to make a video. If you do not like what people are doing in their video, just don't watch it. How many times have I said this on my channel? I swear, I think I've said that more than I've said anything else. And you know what that person needs? Whoever that internet troll is, they need Jesus. Maybe I need to find out who it is so I can send them a copy of this book. They need prayer. They do. They need help. Yeah. Okay. The very last thing that I want to mention is something that Jill brought to my attention yesterday. And it's on Facebook. So I am going to flip the camera around because I'm just going to go right to my Facebook page and show you what she Tag. Okay, can you guys see what I'm looking at? Wait a minute, I'm going to try to... Okay, this is from High Fructose Magazine back in 2014. Let me try to get a closer in shot so you guys can see. I'll read what it is. Okay, this woman sews thread through the top layer of the skin in her palm. And she did it, she said, by using the technique of embroidery traditionally employed to represent femininity and applying it to the expression of its opposite, 
I hope to challenge the preconceived notion that women's work is light and easy. She did the, an embroidery pattern on her palm that resembles a familiar pattern of calluses that develop in hands frequently put to difficult work. Holy friggin' hell, people. This is like the ultimate OMG moment because she sewed thread into her skin. This is taking stitching to the extreme. I saw this and was like, what the F? Yeah. Can you even imagine? I can't even imagine doing that. I mean, look at, especially look at this one. Look where she did the thread on her like lifelines, the lines in her palm. And then right here. Yeah, I'm just astounded. And a little repulsed, if I'm honest. <laughs> like the thought of putting a needle in my hand and I'd have an infection or something. But yeah, is that not like OMG? But okay, I'm going to sign off here. If I get something in the mail, I will check in with you guys later. But if not, then I will check in tomorrow. Hey guys, it is still Wednesday, April 25th. It is 2.32 and my job just ended. So I still have some work to do though. That's the way it goes for me. Um, but I'll probably be done in an hour or so maybe. So that's not bad. Still drinking coffee, but in a different mug. The one that Jill got me from, you know, the coffee Quaker pattern on it. She got this for my birthday last year. Yeah, I love this mug. Love them all. Love all my mugs. But I did get something in the mail. And how I could forget this was coming today. Remember when I said I ordered the box of black DMC? Da, 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 da. Yeah. So this is how it came packaged. 12 skeins of 310. Doesn't it look so nice and pretty and neat in the box? Yeah, so I got me some 310 now to work on the coffee piece. The uh, beans, beans. Okay, but I also got... Let me cover this with a post-it because my address is on it. Um, Keepsake 2019 ad for their calendar. So they show a couple designs, I think, that are in the calendar. I thought I would go through this and share it with you. I'll probably wind up getting it because I got it last year and I did a video and everything. And because I like some of the designs, I think I wound up giving the calendar to Drew, though. I gave it to someone. Okay, so let's see, because they say you save 44%. Okay, yes, send my free gift along with my 2019 keepsake cross stitch calendar. I can home test it for 30 days free. If I like it, I pay two easy installments of $6.99 plus shipping. So basically you're paying $14 plus shipping. I wonder how much shipping is. Because I think last year I did not get the calendar from them. I got it from Amy at Down Sunshine Lane. And I want to say it was like $18, something like that. So it says, in the future, I will receive each new edition of the Cross Stitch Calendar to home test for 30 days for free. Okay, all I got to do is mail the postcard. I do this postcard? Oh, okay. You put this postcard in this envelope, and you don't, it's postage free. All right, but let's take a peek. Oh, they give you a free pattern, and I'm going to show it because it's free. You can stitch that little bouquet, and you get a free pocket calendar with the pattern, with the calendar. So, here is what, now this is for 2019, I'm sure I said that right. So it's 24 projects in the calendar, dazzling color photos that will put a smile on your face every day. Yeah. One of a kind designs, Ursula Michael, Sharon Pope, Barbara Sestock, Emma Congdon, instruction booklet, okay. A bonus Christmas design in this 13th month calendar. And a free pocket calendar. That's awesome. Yeah, I am definitely going to get that so I can do that flip through for you guys. So, but they sent some more paperwork, let's say. It's like a, it was like an envelope full of stuff. Yeah, okay. They have a farm fresh produce tote bag or chrysanthemum. There's a lantern for Halloween. 
Okay. All right, so, oh. Ooh, there's a nice little pattern if this is going to be in it. Look at this one. I like that with the bird. It reminds me of a Barbara Anna design. Yeah. And then, yeah, so look at the Halloween one. Look, the guy has a pumpkin as his head. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, this is a fold out. Okay. So there's some other designs in it. What are they going to show you all 12 months? It's an 11 by 11 wall calendar and a 36 page booklet with instructions, bonus projects, and helpful tips. They do. They show you all of the designs. Well, I guess I should look at it, right, to see if I'm going to like it. Yeah, not really loving it. I may skip it, to be honest, now. Now that I've seen all of the designs. And I'm going to show you guys. Here they are. Look. There are the 12 designs that are going to be in the calendar. Now, I do like this one. And I like the Emma Congdon one, but I don't think I would stitch any of these. So to actually get this would be a waste of $18, honestly. So no flip through video for me for that. I do like that chrysanthemum though, but I would, like I said, I would never stitch it. And I am, believe it or not, trying to be a little bit more frugal with what I spend my money on for stitching. Um, especially because you heard my rant about patterns and stuff. I haven't been buying patterns because I have so many that I want to stitch that it just makes no sense to me. Um, but yeah, I am going to have to probably order some more chalk, the gas chalk for doing that. I have two skeins of it. I don't know if two skeins is going to get me to the end of that piece. I guess I'll see though before I order any more because there is a lot of white in those chalk pieces. Not to mention, well, if I do any other chalk pieces, I'll just use regular white. I only use the chalk because I had so much of it. Because there is, I am going to stitch this chalk piece eventually, probably, you know, when it gets to be fall. Wait a Let me find it real quick. I've loved this one forever, and I even have the fabric picked out that I'm going to use. The fabric I'm going to use, if I can friggin' find it. Oh, come on now. Here it is. It was one of the seasons in chalk that was in the 2016 Just Cross Stitch, the fall one. I love this one. Love, love, love. Um, I'm not going to use chalkboard fabric, though. I am going to use, and let me see what threads, obviously white, but what are the colored threads? I want to say they're like fragrant cloves and something else. Okay, it's Weeks Dye Works, Terracotta. Carrot and curry. Oh, there's a little bit of green. Now, see, I may change that up because for orange, I really like gas fragrant cloves. And then this is like a darker orange. And I think gas even makes, um, there's like a burnt orange. Yeah, I have to say. But yeah, okay, so what I'm going to, I'm going to stitch this on Fiberlicious Burnt Umber uh, Ada. It's like a dark chocolate brown gonna look really good with that up against the um those oranges up against the brown yeah I bought that fabric specifically a long time ago just for that so but okay I'm gonna sign off here um hopefully I can get my job done in an hour and then I can work some on the beans chart since I'm, I'm gonna be up here try to catch up with some floss tube because I'm like nine videos behind or something yeah so all right I will see you guys tomorrow I will not probably check in tonight Unless something crazy happens. <laughs> okay. Have a good day, guys. So, yeah, I'm a big fat liar. Because it's 5.35 p.m. And I'm checking in with you guys again. So, first of all, having a drink. Angry Orchard Hard Cider Rosé. It's okay. I like the hard cider, like the regular beer from them. It's pretty good. I'm not a beer drinker, but I like hard cider. And what goes better with hard cider than toasty peanut butter crackers? <laughs>
my husband just had to go to a union meeting for work and he's going to pick us up Chipotle for dinner on the way back. So I probably have a good hour and a half or whatever that I can do what I want and all that. And I found out I'm off tomorrow. So hopefully I'll be able to get some stitching in tomorrow because I was doing stuff and didn't get to work on my beans beans chart today. But why am I checking in with you guys again? Well, first of all, I forgot to mention again about the Gigi and Stitches. I think that's her floss tube name. The woman that was bullied and all of that that I mentioned in the previous clip. One of the most awesome things about her videos is the fact that Natalie, and I think it's her daughter, I think. I'm not exactly sure. I've not watched her latest one um, where she talks about the message that she got. But her daughter does sign language through the whole video in the background. That is the most awesome thing I've ever seen because for people that, you know, are hearing impaired, there you go, right? So I think that's an awesome thing to do. So, so let's talk Stitch Mania. Um, I did rejoin the group. I don't remember if I told you guys that. I don't think I did. Yeah, I rejoined about, uh, I want to say two weeks or so ago. I miss seeing the projects. And as we all know, the actual Stitch Mania thing is coming up because May 1st is Tuesday. You know, the premise is uh, the first 15 days of May, you do a new start or whatever you want to do. But I had to laugh. I had to laugh because I went on there today and, you know, I haven't been on really Facebook a lot lately. Someone posted and said... I don't understand Stitch Mania. Why start so many new projects? <laughs> it's kind of like the, I don't understand floss tube question. Remember all that drama? Yeah. Now this person did come back in the comments and say that they didn't mean any malice or anything. But what I find hilarious is that they're posting it in Stitch Mania, the group. Um, and two of my most favorite comments to this. So the person said, I don't understand stitch mania. Why start so many projects? So many new projects. Someone came back with a gif and said, because I'm Batman dying over that one. Yeah. And then my other favorite one was the person that said, uh, Like, they can't understand why you're posting it in Stitch Mania, like, and you don't know, or why do you belong in the group when you don't know the purpose of it? The group has gotten so big over the years, though, that I actually think people probably don't go and read the pinned post at the top that explains what Stitch Mania is. But there are a lot of comments on the post, and I was just perusing I don't personally do Stitch Mania. I'm a one, you know, I don't like to have a whole bunch of projects, but I love to see what everyone else is starting and um, to enjoy it. So, but yeah, I just thought that was really funny because I was like, wow, you're posting that in Stitch Mania. Yeah. So there was that. But the main reason why I came in to check in with you guys is because I was going through patterns just a little while ago looking at my stuff, making sure I still want to stitch all of it, right? Mm, excuse me. And I came across these two patterns, which framing ideas I had in my head and I wanted to share with you guys. So the very first one, I bought this at Woodlawn at In Stitches in Alexandria when Jill and I went. There is a company, and I'm going to have to flip my camera around to show you on the Etsy page. There's a company called Stay Home Stitches. And they make circle embroidery frames that the hoop fits inside. So what I want to do is I'm not going to stitch the butterfly, even though I like it. I want to stitch this and frame it in one of those hoops. So I'm going to flip you guys around here in a minute and show you the uh, Etsy page. And we'll talk a little bit about it so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And then you know that... Uh, I almost said Natasha. I don't know why I said that. Layla uh, Claiborne bought this for me as a present. And I was dying over the finish because the frame, and this looks puffy, like they put quilt batting or something behind it 
on the back of this pattern, Paulette tells you where she got the frame, a company called Signed and Numbered on Etsy. And I went and looked at their Etsy store. <gasps> Wait until you see what I found. So I'm going to flip you guys around. We're going to look at my computer screen so I can talk to you about both of those Etsy pages. Okay, the very first one is the Stay Home Stitches page. Now, obviously, I went and calculated the size, and I think I want a six-inch hoop for that spring piece. Let me put it up again. This one. So if you go on their Etsy page, these hoops just came out April 19th. Let me click on the one. They have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven. And then they have some odd sizes like five by eight, four by six. So the six inch hoop that I want is $20. Now, what's awesome, let me try to zoom you guys in a little bit. You can see, let me move my cursor. You can see that you actually put your work in this hoop on the inside, which they give you. You slip it in the frame. Then you put this cardboard backing and then you, they have these little clips on it and look at all the colors you can get. Yeah. I'm going to get that cosmic pink, which is like a bright pink. I actually had contacted them by fa on Facebook and asked them if they would send me a frame for free in exchange for me doing a review on my channel because I really wanted to do that. But they said no. They said they just couldn't do it right now with just starting out releasing them. So that was that was a shame. But so with shipping, it's going to be like $28 or $29. And what's nice too is you get to not only choose the color. I mean, you saw all the colors. But you also get to choose the type. Like they have the taper, double cove, hump, ogee, bead. I want the bead one. I like that size. So yeah. Now the old Danielle would have been like, boom, 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 buying it right now. Nope. I am going to wait until I am ready to stitch that project because who knows, I may change my mind down the road and not want to stitch it. So Yay me, right? So there's number one. Number two is then I went to the store called Signed and Numbered. This is the store. And they have a circle frame because I'm not stitching this. Paulette stitched hers on 36 count linen which made her opening frame four by four. My size, because I'm going to do it on 14 count Ada, is going to be five by five. So they have a circle frame right here. Circle, five by five. It is $32.89, but the awesome part, look at all the colors you can get. So you can get solid finish. You can get vintage finish, which is kind of roughed up. And then super vintage and included with the frame, you get glass. See down here, you get glass, acid free matte board backing, a plywood backing and a sawtooth hanger. And you can even get a dowel if you want to stand this up on a shelf. I think that is awesome. And I don't know how I didn't know about this company before. But that is going, that's what I'm going to do when I go to stitch that project. I am going to come here and get a frame in an awesome color because you know how I like color. But look at all the frames that they have. I was astounded. I said, boy, I may have found a new shop to get frames from because look at them all. They have all different kinds. Uh, Yeah. Uh huh. So I was so taken aback and blown away and awesome. I mean, I love American frame, but they don't have colored frames. They have like just the black, white, plain wood, um, love color. Seriously. 
So, you can check these guys out if you want. Signed and numbered, all one word. Awesome. I'm so glad that Paulette put that on the back of that pattern. But yeah, that's it for me for right now, guys. And that's probably going to be... I'm literally not going to be checking in again with you. Ha! Huh, I say that. Famous last words, right? If I don't see you tonight for some reason, I will definitely check in tomorrow morning showing you what stitching I got done. Have a good night, guys. My Hocus Pocus mug from Be Fairy Creative. Love that. Are you kidding me right now? So today is Thursday, April... Why do I never know the date? April 26th. My morning started off good. Um, I'm irritated now, however. So, I was supposed to be off today. So I get up. I'm drinking coffee. Um, you know, I got stuff to do. I still have a teensy bit of work stuff to do, but not until later on. Got to clean the bathroom. Did, 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 you know. At 10 o'clock, it's 11.20 in the morning here. At 10 o'clock, I get an email from the reporter I work for saying, hey, I got asked to do a job today at 2 o'clock. Is everybody available? I'm instantly irritated because I hate last-minute changes like that. You know, I did not plan on doing that today, having, you know, it's a job starting at two o'clock and it's due tonight, which most of the time our jobs can be due anywhere from three to seven days. Yeah, it's due tonight. So that means I have to work until it's done. And given that it's starting at two o'clock, I could be working late. So I email everybody. Okay, everybody's available. Well, now I'm waiting because she's like, oh, well, I'm waiting for the firm, to, the court reporting firm to confirm that they do need me. I'm, I have it in my head that we're working. Yeah, so I have about three hours to do stuff. Yeah. So this morning I was drinking coffee. Do you guys watch Pam and Steph? If you do not, what are you doing with your life? They never fail to entertain. They are hilarious and they got a bell. I was dying. I was dying. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to tell you what it is, how they use it. It's hilarious. And I wish I would have thought of something like that for my videos. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I haven't finished their video yet because it was like an hour, but yeah, really, really, they are some entertaining ladies. And boy, do I wish I was going to StitchCon because I would love to meet them and sit with them and stitch with them. Yeah. And yeah, speaking of retreats, you guys know next week already. I mean, by the time you see this, it's going to be the day before I leave for the retreat because I leave on, again with the dates, Thursday, May 3rd, that morning. So I'm not going to have a video going up at six in the morning that morning because what I'm going to do that day, I'm going to do a video of me packing for the retreat so I can show you what I pack, how I prepare you wouldn't believe, my husband thinks I'm crazy for even doing a video like that. He's like, what do you mean, how do you pack? I've had people ask me, what do I take? Now, everyone takes different things. Like, I don't take, um, people take lights. The only light I take is that clip-on light. Yeah, because that's enough light for me. But a lot of people will take their travel out lights that unfold. Yeah, I have one, but I don't take it. But Okay. Before I get to what I stitched, I've had a couple questions, people asking me. First off, my review video for Pat's Needles. I recorded that video back in December or January. It's been a while. So I had kind of forgotten what I even said. I do know that I did not care for the needles. But you know, it is just my opinion. So many people raved about those needles, though, that I was like, okay, I have to get some of these and try them. And I just, and it's just funny to watch that video back because I watched it back this morning because I was still stitching on 28 Count Lugana exclusively. I wasn't stitching on Ada. And 
I was not even using the Easy Guide needle yet, which I love that needle. And that's the only needle that I use now. Yeah, I wasn't even using that. I hadn't even discovered that yet. So as I said in the previous clip, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, there are still a bunch of videos that I recorded months and months ago. So you may see, like now I've changed my mind about things. Do you know what I mean? Like how I, what I stitch on, blah, blah, blah. So just take that with a grain of salt. If you don't see like my new intro and outro, you know that that's an older video. But after next month, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be through all of those. And I'm actually looking forward to that just because then once I get through all of those videos I've pre-recorded, everything you see is going to be current. Like videos that I've recorded, you know, in the two or three days when you're seeing it. So not something that's been months and months ago. Um, yeah, so soon enough, soon enough after next month, probably, maybe, they, some may spill into June, I will be through those videos. So I did have a question. Someone asked me what my husband does for work, and I probably said it in a Stitch With Me video. He is a supervisor at a wastewater treatment plant in our county. He works about 45 minutes away from our house. You know, it treats the water that we use to go to the bathroom, if I'm not mistaken. You know, treats that water and makes it clean, I think. Don't quote me. Um, he's been doing his job. He's been there like 23 years. Yeah, he got that job when he was, you know, 19, 20. And he has stayed there. I don't know too many people that have done that in this day and age, you know, our generation. I mean, I've been doing my job for 17 years, so there you go. But yeah, so he gets to retire in five years and that's what he's doing. So that's when we plan on moving, um, you know, starting another chapter of our life. And yeah, things are going to be a little bit different at that point. I can't damn retire until I can get Social Security because I just can't. We would not be able to pay our bills and stuff. Because of his, if he retires right when he can, he's only going to get, I want to say, 60% of his income. Now, our mortgage is also going to be paid off at that time. Awesome. So it's going to kind of equal out. Like our mortgage payment and him only getting 60%, it's going to be like it is now. So that's why I still have to work. But yeah, once my ass can collect Social Security, praise God, it is still going on in, uh, I'll be 44. So it'll still be going on in 18 years when I can stop work. Um, I'm stopping because yeah, I've worked my whole damn life. I've been working since I was 15. So tired, so tired anyway. So that was a question. And then someone asked me what mat board I use to, you know, wrap my fabric around when I do my finishing. I actually use the cardboard that came with scrapbook paper. When I order scrapbook paper on scrapbook.com, they will mail this kind of, uh, you know, it's really thin and it's a 12, it comes in a 12 by 12 sheet. Okay. I've cut this down and I save it because I mean, I have like a bunch of little pieces because I had ordered a crap load of scrapbook paper. And so I had a whole bunch of these. These are the last of them though. And I also have this, which I haven't even used. I bought this off Amazon. Crescent mounting board white. And I'm going to open this up so I can show you guys how thin it is. Like I said, I've never even used it because I was just using the cardboard that came with the, um, the scrapbook paper, which was free. I mean, you know, I paid for the paper, but yeah. Oh my God, really right now? What the, really? I'm trying not to cut myself here. Okay, yeah, this is throw that on the floor. So here is, this mat board is thicker, this white mat board is thicker. I don't know if you can see that. It's focusing on my face. It's thicker than this cardboard. But it, this is still serves the same purpose. Now, one of the best investments I ever made as far as finishing was buying this 
Do I have the page pulled up? No. This is a Fiskars Precision Rotary Trimmer. You put your, wait, wait, let me make sure. This is actually kind of heavy. Here's the blade. Blades down here. You just slide it. Uh, point might not let me. Oh, there we go. Okay, you put your paper there, slide, and it cuts it. And it's self sharpening, so you never need to replace it. This will cut chipboard, foam core, cardboard like that. You know, this was 60 bucks on Amazon, and I'm pretty sure I have this on my influencer page. It's now $57. Completely worth it. Because what I was previously doing to try and cut mat board and stuff was I was using this and like my um, my ruler that I use for cutting fabric and I could never get it straight. I was like a complete moron. That thing has saved me because if you don't have your mat board cut straight, it's not gonna look right. Your fabric is not gonna go straight around the back. So yeah, that is what I use. And I've also used the sticky board because I use the stitchery tape when I do that. And if you buy the sticky board that's already got it on the back, that saves you a step. Okay. So that was all the questions that I had. What did I stitch on? I had some time yesterday. Like I said, my husband had that meeting for work, his union meeting. So I was able to work on beans, beans for a little bit. Yeah. Now I had to move the Q-snap because to get these women done. But so I was able to start this lady. Oh my God. I love these. Just love, love, love. Now, of course, my favorite lady is the one that's upside down because crazy kooky. Hello. Yeah. Um, 14 count eight, a picture this plus and Midas using just black and white thread. So I hope I was planning on working on this for the rest of the day today. Um, I may still have time to work on it a little bit before the job starts. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really enjoying that. And when I get done, like it's the patterns in two pages, when I get done the first page, I'll pull it off the cue snaps and show you guys the whole first page. So you can see, you know, what's been going on with that. And of course I worked on my tulip house. Are you kidding? I watched more of the walking dead. I am now in season four. Holy moly. Um, I'm so glad that I started from episode one again and watched it, you know, all the way through. But I think I made some good progress on this. I outlined the house, you know, did the bottom here, outlined the house. And the reason why this looks like this, these are flowers and leaves that wind up, you know, looking like it's covering the front of the house. So outlined the house and then started on the brickwork. Is that red not gorgeous? That is Weeks Dye Works Turkish Red. And I don't remember what the original red, I want to say Aztec red was the original red called for. But yeah, I had Turkish red, so yeah. So tonight, more brickwork is going to be happening. I don't know if I can finish the complete brickwork tonight. I can try. We'll see. Because my job tomorrow doesn't start until 2 o'clock also, so I could actually stay up tonight if I wanted to. And I finished that book that I was reading. The ending was, uh, the endings of the books I've been reading recently have not been that great. The book held my interest and I liked it, but yeah, the ending was loose. Uh, uh. So got to find another book to read now. And yeah, I was up to like 1 30 in the morning yesterday. God. But okay. I think that's it. That's all I got to share. This is 13 minutes. Good God. All right. If I get anything in the mail, of course, you know, the routine, I will check in with you. If not, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good day. Hey guys, it is Friday, April 27th. I did not get anything in the mail yesterday. I actually have off work today. It the, My schedule has been so nuts for the past two weeks. We weren't supposed to work yesterday. I wound up working. We got a job. I wound up working from 2 p.m. to almost 10 p.m. And then today's job canceled. So I have off today, except for like some admin and calendar stuff, because I monitor the calendar for um, our work and stuff. So one thing I did get in the mail, though, that I forgot to show you, the hair dye that I use, the red dye. It's this one, Color All Team, and it is ruby red. 
So how I do this, okay, because if, you, if you've ever seen a hair dye kit, you know, you mix it up in here and you apply it through there. I don't do that. I do mix it up in here, but then what I do, because yeah, the gray roots starting to show and nah, can't have that. I mix it up in a bowl. This is from the dollar store with like a little plastic spoon that I use obviously just for hair dye. And then I bought some of these brushes. I, cause now I can just do the roots and not have to do my whole head. So I apply the hair dye with these and it works really good instead of me trying to use that other thing. So yeah, I really love the conditioner that comes in that hair dye. It smells so good. So one thing also that I forgot to mention in my previous clips, and this is kind of an adult topic. So if you have children, you're going to think I'm a child. You really are. So the show Westworld on HBO, it is on HBO show. So they do show nudity here and there, right? <laughs> so I'm watching, this is um, days ago. I want to say this was Sunday night, Monday, watching the first episode of the second season that just started. The robots have taken over the place. So this one woman has this worker captive, right? One of the office workers. And <laughs> God, you're going to die. Um, she makes him change clothes. So when she does that and he, you know, he strips down to his underwear and she's like, no, everything. Well, that got my attention a little bit. So they show him from the back and you see his butt. And I'm like, yeah, BFD, because they show butts on regular TV, right? The next scene, they flipped around and you saw his front, all of his front for a good like eight seconds. I think my jaw like fell open because let's face it. If you watch movies and everything, nine times out of 10, they're not showing the man. They're showing the woman nude. Am I right? So here's the funniest part. Jill, I knew Jill had not watched Westworld yet and I knew that she was going to. So I texted her and I said, OMG, you see a man's full on penis in the first episode. And she was like, ooh. <laughs> and when I told my husband, he was like, you're so stupid. Like you're so, I was dying. I mean, literally I know my mouth fell open. So I've been meaning to tell you guys that for like days now and I keep forgetting. Okay. What did I work on? Because we're here to talk about stitching, right? I did get to work on my beans beans chart a little bit. I almost have a whole lady done. Oh my God. I love this chart. Yeah. I've started like, you know, I did the half of the, I did one leg and now I'm coming back and completing it. So once I complete that, all I have to do are her legs. And then I'm done her. Oh my God. Love, 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 love this piece. Because some of these ladies are sassy. Like one woman, it, she has her hand on her hip. Yeah. And the one's upside down. Are you kidding me right now? Yeah. So worked on that teensy, teensy bit. And then I watched two episodes last night of The Walking Dead and did some more brickwork. Yeah, coming along on that. Actually got quite a bit done. I also got up this morning and watched another episode of The Walking Dead and did some more brickwork. So let me tell you though, when I get done that red, I'm going to be glad to go on to another color because when I'm done the red, I'm going to finish the roof. The roof has some of the door color and it has some pink and green because it has some flowers. So I'm looking forward to doing that. But yeah, I love that red. So that's what I've been doing. I think I've done pretty good as far as progress. But yeah, that's it. That's all I got for today. Um, it is one o'clock in the afternoon and my mail has not come yet. I'm not expecting anything. I will tell you though, I've been really good about buying. I have not bought a bunch of stuff. Uh, I finally figured out what I, what I want to get my mom for Mother's Day. Amazon has, she loves rings. She loves jewelry. Amazon has these, um, uh, bah, 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 bah. 
these rings that are stacking and you can get a name engraved on them. So they were each, I think $15. So I got my name, my brother, my sister. So I'm going to give her those. So that was about 45 bucks. So that's a pretty good present for Mother's Day. So I'm going to get her that. But then, you know, I was looking around. I get like some of my grocery store items from there. I get like little trash bags, dog bones, my K-cups. So I was looking around and I bought a mug because in order to get like the trash bags was an add-on item. So in order to get that, you had to spend $25. Well, I wasn't to the $25 yet. So I got a mug and it's actually the mug from... Bendy Stitchy's page, the B one. Oh my God. Yeah, I've had that on my wish list forever. So ordered that. And then I check Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie's page periodically. Um, I'm not a member of her Fabric of the Month anymore. And the, the list is full, so you can't get on it. Whenever she puts a new color out there, though, I get it most of the time. And she did have a new color. She had Busy Lizzie, which looked beautiful. So I ordered a fat quarter of that. But that's going to be a while because she apparently has had some sort of ankle injury. So she even put a disclaimer on her website that said orders are going to be, you know, backed up from that. So that's okay. I don't need that fabric right now. So somewhere down the road, I'll get that. And yeah, that's about it. I mean, I ordered some quilt fabric from Etsy for my spring piece. I think I've, I ordered some pink and white gingham fabric, which I think is going to look great. So we'll see. But okay, I'm going to get off here. I'm getting work emails. I got to deal with calendar and stuff. If I get something in the mail today, which I'm hoping the mail will be here in another hour, I will check in with you guys. If not, I will see you tomorrow. Okay, literally two minutes after I filmed the previous clip, my mail came. <laughs> and I got some stuffs. Yeah. Well, I got my Color Street order. You know, the nail polish strips? Yeah. So I'm not even going to open this yet because I am going to do a whole unboxing video and demo so that is probably not going to be up on my channel though. By the time you see this, probably the following week after that, like the second week of May. Yeah, cannot wait. I saw that and was like, ah. And Jennifer Upton had just messaged me today, actually, this morning, you know, filming this clip this morning. She gave me some tips on applying them. So I'm going to have to print that out so I can do that for you guys. Yeah, I, I need to figure out something for my nails that works. I mean, I pray to God. Okay. Needle Minder of the Month from Brenda. At Brenda's Minders and More. If you remember, last year someone purchased a subscription for me for the club for the whole year. And this month, Brenda kept, I mean this month. This year, Brenda just kept it going, which I so appreciate that. I mean, I love Needle Minders. This is March's, I'm guessing. I love that. That's pretty. And because I do a lot of small projects, I really love the small needle minders like this because they don't weigh down a hoop. Do you know what I mean? And holding it in my hand if I hold it. I love that. It's so delicate and pretty. Brenda, thank you so much. And let me... There's her email and her phone number at the top. And you can go to her Facebook group. It is called Brenda's Minders and More. So there's that. Okay. The last thing I got was actually one of the pieces of fabric. I ordered two gingham fabrics. And this is one of them. So let's open it up and see. I have my spring piece here that I've already mounted on the board. Pray to God this gingham fabric looks right. Ooh, I like that. That may work. Please, God, please work. Because I'm tired of buying fabric. Okay. So I forget. This was from Stitch Stash Diva. Like I said, it's on Etsy, but um, she has apparently a website too. And I ordered a yard of it. So let's... Yeah, that is pretty. I think this might work. <gasps> yes! I love that! Okay, let me try to do that better. I think that's going to look fantastic. Uh-huh. Because it matches with the pink and the orange. It's like a pinky orange. 
What do you guys think? I really, let me hold it in front of my face so you can see it. I really like that. I'm using that. So now what I'm going to have to try to do also, because what I want to do, and I haven't ordered them yet, that's what I could have ordered. For the top of the frame, I'm thinking about doing a bow and some fake tulips. That uh, Priscilla has hers done like that, and I really like that. So maybe I get the, um, maybe I try to find ribbon that looks like this. I don't know. Or I could even maybe do, um, could do black and white gingham for the ribbon. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I'm so glad. Now I bought, there's another piece of fabric coming that looks like this, but it's a smaller check. And I think it's, um, darker pink. So I'll compare, but that looks really good. Yay. Yay. Okay, guys, real quick clip. Like I said, signing off here. So I'll be checking in with you tomorrow to let you know, show you what I stitched. I am going to try to stitch more on the beans, beans chart a little bit. And then tonight I will work on the tulip house. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, it is uh, 11 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, April 28th. Mug from Laura Ellis. I think my powers are being used for evil today. I'm on edge today, people. Um, I was getting ready this morning and I was actually watching the Gigi and Stitches video where she talked about the floss tube bullying and it just broke my heart. Um, everything she was saying and I, I'm not even through the whole video yet and the bullying is just so unnecessary. I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, I don't, I don't get it. I, I really just don't get it, but I think I'm more emotional about it because of what happened last night. So let me preface by saying for my job, I handle our team, meaning I'm the lead of the team. So I do a lot of stuff in the background besides the actual editing of the deposition or my piece of it, because we split the units up. So when I take time off, I move mountains to make sure stuff is taken care of. Coverage is done. You know, we have coverage, all of that. I knew about my days off in May, which are May 3rd and 4th, and then May 17th and 18th, both for the retreats. I knew about the day, the 3rd and 4th in January of this year. And I knew about the floss tube retreat, the 17th and 18th, November of last year. So there is someone that we contact to use as a backup in those instances. And I'm also taking a cruise to celebrate my fifth year wedding anniversary with my husband in September. I'm going to be off for six work days. Like I'm going to be off from uh, Sunday all the way through the following Monday. So definitely need to have someone in place, right? So I emailed this person. It was months ago. I want to say it was like right after in January. And I was like, hey, look, I'm off these days. Can you fill in? Be me, basically. And this person works as a paralegal part-time. But they said, my schedule's really flexible. The person I work for is awesome. No problem. I can take those days off, fill in for you. I even sent a follow-up email, I want to say in March, saying, hey, are you sure you can still do this? Because I'm... I'm high strung. Like I have anxiety about that kind of stuff, especially because we use Dropbox for work. We use Google sheets. We use a couple different programs that I keep running like a tight ship. I clean that stuff up every day. It's organized. I don't want to come back to a shit storm or stuff all disorganized and messed up. And then I have to clean up messes that I wasn't even a part of. Do you know what I mean? So my husband goes to bed early last night because he is fishing today. Well, early, like nine. So I'm getting ready to stitch. And I hear a beep on my phone and I have an email from this person that says, well, I talked to my boss last night, meaning today, meaning Friday. 
I talked to my boss and she will not give me off on Thursday. Okay, my first thing was, well, why are you just now asking for the time off when I asked you back in um, January? I was so upset. I think I literally cried for like five minutes and more out of frustration than like sadness because I took such great pains to outline all the procedures I do in the course of a day for every job, which is ginormous when you look at the list of it. I listed out all the procedures, gave her links to all of the software, did all of this stuff. Like I said, moved mountains and got and let everybody know, sent these giant emails to our whole team. I mean, a lot of stuff. I was so livid and just annoyed. I wrote her back and I said, you know, I don't even know how to respond to this. I'm forwarding this to our, our reporter. I forwarded it to the reporter that I work for. And I said, you need to deal with this because, and so I explained and I was like, it makes me want to question now. How can I trust that she's available on the 17th and 18th? And then in the week in September when I'm gone. Is she going to come to me the day before and say, oh, I can't help. And then I'm screwed because I haven't, you know, secured any other help. So I told the reporter I work for, I said, I don't even want to use her. We got to find somebody else. We got to find somebody else. So I spent last night, the great part of last night, emailing back and forth with the reporter I work for. She was like, don't worry about it. We'll find people. And then this morning I got up and was like, okay, I'm going to try to ask our team to do some of the administrative stuff that I do. So I did that. So I think we're going to have it covered, but it's just, I'm, I was just so, I literally was just so upset last night about that. I was like, and you know, I have, when I have anxiety like that and stuff like that happens, my body holds tension. So my upper back is killing me. I had the heating pad on my back last night, took a muscle relaxer and I was up until like two in the morning cause I could not sleep. So, yeah, and I woke up today and I wasn't really feeling that great about it, you know. So, I forgot what I was even going to say. Was that it? No, that wasn't it. I mean, I did stitching. Um, so, yeah, so dealing with that, work is just always such a giant pain in my ass. I, you know, I can't wait to go to the retreat. And first of all, you know, I already paid for all of these trips. We've already paid for the cruise. We've already done all that. They're taking the time off. There's no question there. Um, it is going to be sorely needed come Thursday. Yeah. Um, I did start reading a new book. I am only like 12% in, so I'm not like 100% sure that I absolutely love it. But the premise is intriguing. God, I'm sorry. I'm like short of breath. It is called The New Neighbors by Simon Lelick. Lelick? Okay. It says, The perfect couple, the perfect house, the perfect crime. Londoners Jack and Sydney found their dream home. Lots of space, a great location, and a friendly owner who wanted a young couple to have it. Everything is exactly what they hoped for when they move in, except Jack makes a discur disturbing discovery in the attic, and Sydney begins to wonder about the girl next door. And they each keep the other in the dark, which is a mistake because someone has just been killed outside their back door. And now the police are watching them. This is their chance to prove they're innocent or to get away with murder. Whose story do you believe? Now the book is told in alternating perspectives. It's told in the perspective of a Jack and Sydney, and it's almost like they are writing in a journal, like Jack writes a page and then Sydney writes a page and Sydney has read what Jack wrote and she's commenting. So I'm only a little bit way into the story. So they buy this house and the owner has left all his shit in there. Like all of his stuff is in there. He just met some woman on the internet, just picked up and moved. So they get to have all of his stuff. Well, I don't know what's disturbing in the attic because I've just gotten to that part. But yeah, so I'm hoping that it, it keeps getting good. I mean, I, it, like I said, I like it so far. So I've been reading that. My video for my Mill Hill kit uh, went up. Actually, it's today when I'm filming. And so I wanted to address a couple questions. Someone actually asked me, 
if on the chart, because you know some of the colors in the, this is the kit that I have if you didn't watch the video. I love this one. And there are a bunch of yellows. And someone asked me, does it say on the chart how many strands of each color is there? And no, there isn't. Um, I looked. Let me make sure before I say, because I answered them back and said no. Because here's the key. All it does is list the DMC and tell you how many strands to use. It does not say there are, um, you know, two lengths of this. There's one length of this. Because, boy, that would make it a whole lot easier, wouldn't it, if they did that? Because, excuse me, if you watch the video, I had a hard time discerning, I think, the gold colors. Yeah. But someone else also had a question um, about, and I'm probably not even going to stitch this kit till next year, honestly, around, you know, uh, St. Patrick's Day. That's my plan anyway. They asked if I stitch in the well. Now, when I put the paper on, because I put the paper on stretcher bars, it makes it so much easier. I did not put it so I can stitch in the well because the back of the paper, they, they paint it. So it... But I do. I like to stitch in the well because then it's easier to end threads off in the back. So when I go to stitch this, I will flip this paper around so the green is like that. But yeah, so looking forward to doing that at some point because I, you know, also bought a Mill Hill frame to frame it in. That it fits in perfectly. And someone had also asked me a question, are these five and a half inch stretcher bars? No, they're six inch. Um, the stretcher bars only come in whole numbers like there's no half so the paper is six inches this is a six inch stretcher bar set so there's that and so stitching I did work on my beans beans chart yeah I got the woman done isn't she awesome and so this is the woman that's upside down like I did you know, one leg and now I have to go back and finish that. But yeah, so that's the woman that's upside down. And I actually, you know, I should have known. I should have known. First of all, I forgot to mention with the work thing, you know, there's a saying that, that, you know, do not trust your own understanding or circumstances you know, ask God, take your troubles to God, and he's going to lead you on the path to take. Boy, that is easier said than done, let me tell you, because don't we all, I want to understand why people do things. We, you know, it's hard when stuff like this happens with the work thing or whatever to just say, okay, there's a reason this is happening. I don't know what it is. Be still, let God, you know, be still, I am God. I just read that passage in that, um, that Psalm book that I read. It's hard to be still. If you watch my videos, I have a hard time being still and just letting things happen or insight come to me as to what to do. <clears throat> but anyway, <clears throat> someone, I had asked someone, asked someone, Jesus Christ. I had asked in my last Stitch With Me video if anyone had any tags I could answer to let me know. Someone gave me a link to Trisha, the left-handed stitcher. She has like a whole list of stitching tags, which are awesome. And I've never answered one of them, I don't think. So I found one that I'm going to answer. Well, by the time you see this, the Stitch With Me video will have gone up. <laughs> um, and one of the questions is about needle minders. And so I went to my, I switched needle minders. I love this one. This is my favorite needle minder. And I think because she's just so pretty and, I mean, she's a queen, right? The crown. I mean, it's just so gorgeous. And so I did a little bit of stress shopping. Now, I should have known yesterday's clip when I said, oh, I've been so good. I haven't bought hardly anything. That was just going to cause trouble. So I decided to go, when I saw that needle minder, I decided to go to Gina's Unique Boutique on Etsy because she has an Etsy store. And I bought two clay needle minders. So I spent like 35 bucks because the clay ones aren't cheap. So with shipping, spent $35. Not bad. That's all I bought. Just those two needle minders. So when they come in the mail, I will show you guys. But yeah, is the coffee piece not turning out fantastic? Like just, and I'm going to work on this today. 
Um, I do have my nail video, the Color Street video to record, and I have to clean the friggin' bathroom. Haven't done that yet. But besides that stuff, um, yeah, I'm going to work on this today and hopefully, you know, start working on the woman that's upside down because that's, that's my woman. That's, yeah. Okay. And of course, I worked on the Tulip House and watched more of The Walking Dead. I'm on like episode 40, 45, something like that. The one episode where Herschel died, I was like this, like for 20 minutes of the video. Of the, yeah, of the show. Oh my God. I, that show, I, mm, 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 mm. But I got done the brickwork. Yeah. Does that not look fantastic? So not only did I get done all of the bricks, I also got done like this little flower trellis up here. But what a pain in the ass that was. And I'll tell you why. The green wasn't, the green wasn't a pain. The pink was because do you see it's like one here, one here, you know, they're the heads of flowers. Well, if I carried that thread, you would see it. So what I wound up doing was tucking the thread behind this green, doing this, tucking it behind this green, doing this. That's what I had to do. And so tonight I am going to work on the roof part. Like there is an outline of a roof. The roof is solidly filled in. So that's going to take a while. But I want to get done. Do I have it here? No, of course I don't. I want to get done the outline of the roof. And in the outline, there is a flower trellis just like this all in it. So I'm going to have to do the same thing. But yeah, I was so surprised I was able to get done that brickwork. But being up until two in the morning, I had a lot of time. But it's turning out so good. And yeah, I'm just going to keep going with it. No rotation. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to keep going until I'm done. Now, I'm probably not going to, well, I'm a liar. I will take this to the retreat, but I probably, if I stitch on it, it'll probably be in my room because of space is tight. I need to have small pieces. So I'm probably going to take, I'm definitely taking this because of it being in May and I'm hoping to actually finish this there. I'm going to be taking that. And then I'm also going to take, Remember the coffee thing, the word coffee I'm stitching? I'm going to take this as well. So, but yeah, I will take those two and I'll take the beans, beans. Why not? I'm going to do a retreat packing video. I'll just take all the stuff. Even if I don't work on it, who cares, right? As long as I got room in my suitcase. So that is what I worked on. Jesus Christ, this clip is 16 minutes. My video, this vlog is going to be two hours. And you know what? I don't even care. If you don't like it, don't watch it. <laughs> But okay, the last thing I have to talk about is I received a gift yesterday in my email from Peacock and Fig. May Stewart Olson, who is a Floss Tube fan, watches my channel, comments on almost every video I do. She sent me two cross stitch patterns from Peacock and Fig as a present. Very first one. So much nope. Are you kidding me right now? Uh, yeah, love that. So much nope all over the place. And then this one, I think I want to get this as a tattoo on my body. Seriously. Just say no to stupidity. <laughs> love that. Love the flowers. May, thank you so much. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. Now, my bee mug is coming in the mail today. Or hell, at least I think it is. Coming from Amazon. So if that comes in the mail, I will check back with you guys later on and show you. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, it is still Saturday, April 28th. It is 1.46 in the afternoon. Yes, I changed shirts because it is like 75 degrees here and I uh, can't wear a sweater in that. So husband and I are getting ready to go out to get lunch at Chick-fil-A and go to get some bushes and flowers for our garden. He got home early-ish from fishing. But I got my mail. Yeah, are you ready to see the mug? <gasps> Look at that. Oh my God. Is it not the cutest thing ever? Yeah, love that. Oh my God. But I just filmed my Color Street video. You know, the nail, the nail polish strips. Oh my God, I love them. And of course I had to use the ones that were glitter first. And I walked outside to put something in recycling and it was like 
shining like a diamond, like blingy bling, like dying. So easy to apply and really, really nice. I got three other sets because it was buy three, get one free. The video is going to go up on my channel on May 4th, so tune in for that. Uh, Jennifer Upton is who I bought these from. Yeah, oh my God, game changer, people. No no creases or ridges or bubbles like I had with Jamberry. No. So there was that. And then the button and beads kit. Okay, so in the last clip I said, no, it does not show how many strands. I mean, if you look right here, so I text you and I'm like, what am I missing here? Like everyone is saying you can see how many strands of floss they include. And I'm like, mine does not say it. I'm missing it somewhere. So she sends me a picture of hers. My kit's from 2012, so I'm thinking that's the reason why. I'm thinking that in the newer kits, they included it. Because if you look here, on hers, the picture that she sent to me, next to the floss color, it has the parentheses and then how many strands are included in the kit. This does not say that. You can see that. Yeah, so I wasn't missing anything. Um, I had like a bunch of people asking me that. It was like, no. But yeah, they must have started doing that. So, okay, my video also went up reacting to my first floss tube video ever. A lot of you liked that video, but holy mother of God, a pain in my ass to film it. For that video was what, 13 minutes? It took me like four hours because I had to use, to get this, the video on the screen, I use Windows. I had to use what was called Microsoft Encoder. Oh my God, it was such a pain. So I don't think I'll be doing another kind of video like that, but that is how I did it. And the last thing I want to talk about is just another button company. I just received notification that they are starting a new button lovers club called Words with Buttons. It's starting May 1st, where they're pairing with some designers apparently to... Uh, bring you projects to make with their button packs every month. Very intriguing because, you know, one of the reasons why I didn't subscribe to their button club was like, what am I going to do with all these buttons? If they give you projects and they're really cool, then maybe I'll sign up for it. So stay tuned for that. Like I said, May 1st, by the time you guys see this video, it's going to be out for a few days. So I will probably not be checking in tonight. I will check in with you tomorrow morning to show you what stitching I got. I forgot how bright that color is when you first do it. Holy crap. Yeah, today is Sunday, April 29th. This is going to be my last clip for this weekly vlog because I go from Monday to Sunday. I just did my roots. Holy moly. Bright as a firecracker. Okay, so let's settle this Mill Hill kit thing once and for all because holy mother of God so many people have been messaging me still saying no it does say it on your kit it's on the right column no it isn't as I said in the last clip Jill sent me a picture of hers her kit is newer my kit is from 2012 her kit her kit right here next to the DMC numbers has a parentheses and then a number. And that's how many strands they give you of each. It's not this column, people. This is how many strands you stitch with. And I'm going to prove it. Because look, this says three all the way down here. And then this says two. I have the thread from the kit. There's one strand of this, one strand of this. This is more than three strands. And this is more than three. So that is not it. Just FYI. Yeah. So what did I stitch on? I did, <coughs> Jesus Christ. This is not beer, by the way. <laughs> Sparkling apple juice, it's actually really good. As I choke, okay. I did a Stitch With Me video, recorded it this morning and I worked on my Beans Beans chart. So I did get more done. I didn't get any more done yesterday because was doing different stuff and then we went and got flowers and planted them and all that. 
So this is what I got done. This is the woman that's upside down. This is her part of her skirt. So not bad. Because my Stitch With Me video was like 45 minutes. So not bad for 45 minutes. Still really loving that piece. The white goes up here. So that should be good. Okay. And then, of course, last night, I didn't get downstairs stitching until about 10 o'clock because my husband decided not to go fishing today. So he didn't have to go to bed really early. So, stitching at 10 o'clock, of course, watching The Walking Dead. And I got done. I started working on the roof. And why is this coming undone? Okay. I didn't get the whole roof stitched because what I did was I outdid, you know, one leg. And now I'm coming along and completing it. So, I've gotten this whole entire side done. And then tonight I'll do this side. And then I want to try to do the trellis. So, we'll see. I don't know. He's off again tomorrow, but he's going fishing, so he will be going to bed before 10 o'clock. So I'll probably be able to start stitching, you know, at a reasonable time. Um, my sister's soccer game is in like an hour. It's 3.20 p.m. Forgot to tell you guys that. And it's cold as hell outside. It was 80 degrees here yesterday. Um, It's like 55 today. So, of course, of course it is because... I get to, uh, you know, sit outside in bleachers. I'm going to stop and get a Starbucks coffee before I go. Yeah. So I'm going to sign off here. As always, if you have any questions that I have not answered in my video, <laughs> please leave them in the comment section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.